The quest for the Maroon Beret, the South African Perry Bats. Let's go. For the next 72 hours, these men and women will be pushed beyond their limits in a seemingly endless series of physical and mental tests as they battle their way through the SANDF's grueling Basic Parachute Selection Learning Program. The purpose of the Basic Parachute Selection Learning Program, which is presented here at the South African Army Infantry School, is to select new recruits for the Basic Static Line Parachute Jump Learning Program, which is presented at the South African Army Formation's esteemed 44 Parachute Regiment. Due to the demanding nature of their role on the battlefield, the SANDF's Parachute Infanteers need to be highly skilled and extremely fit the parachute infantry is responsible for transporting and if you look at the training these guys go through from the beginning when they sign up in the military until when they finish it's about a year checking the description you can take a look at the timeline but i'm going to equate them to like our rangers right they've got a pretty broad mission set historically been fighting in rhodesia in the South African border wars, but there's quite a few things that go on just in our local region. So as they differ from the Rangers in the U.S. traveling around the world doing battle, they've got it right in their backyard. Dispatching personnel and equipment by means of aircraft in support of objectives on the battlefield. Once on the ground, they perform a variety of specialist tasks, including medical evacuation, air assault, and air supply. This selection process is the first step towards becoming a respected paratrooper, one worthy of wearing the famed Maroon Beret. Having passed all their entry tests for the selection program, each student is now issued a red numbered sleeve, which they must wear throughout the entire selection process. This red wristband is a symbol of their perseverance. To lose it would mean to lose everything. Should a student fail certain crucial tests, his or her wristband will be taken away and along with it, the prospect of one day wearing the renowned Maroon Beret. During military training, battle efficiency tests are used to measure a soldier's physical standard, comprising speed and power tests. I don't know a lot about the South African Armed Forces boot camp, so it looks like in my research, they come to this, they get evaluated. Are they fit enough to even come to this selection, right, in their first few days? They're not, they yank the red bracelet, and they go back to the regular military. If you guys in South Africa, put it in the comments and let me know. From what I can tell, training looks like just shy of a year, and their support of any missions, probably, that the sf units are doing in conjunction with the sf in be between the border wars and everything else going on down there i'm sure they get involved in a lot of other things beyond those type of missions but you guys you know let me know in the comments the efficiency tests also act as entry tests for the main selection phase for this group of students who are by now straining at the leash the program finally kicks off with a 3.2 kilometer run wearing full battle dress they need to cover this distance in 18 minutes the harsh little karoo landscape has over the years proven to be the perfect environment for endurance testing it's so what do you guys think of pt tests like this so you come to pt right a lot of times you'll see them doing a run right so these guys are already saying okay there's no need for just a regular run <clears throat> Let's do it in gear. You know, let's think about ranger training. I'm going to use that as my closest example I can think of. And they do a pretty comparable thing, but what do you guys think is the best solution? Should we just find out how fast they are? Should they be geared up? I think they should be geared up because that really adds a layer of frustration when the stuff starts chafing, gets heavy, and people start complaining. Actually in winter, when temperatures fluctuate between extremes within a matter of hours. The days are normally scorchers, and at night, the temperature here dips considerably. If you want part two, put it in the comments.
body is always in some state of adaptation. During the quest for the Maroon Beret, ladies won't be receiving any special treatment since the men and women who finally earn their wings need to be equally tough. And so far, the instructors are not particularly impressed by their performances. I wonder how much truth is in that today. We had a discussion about this on the live streams with respect to if there is a different standard, should it be there? Should it just be a standard? We shouldn't have a lower standard for men or women. And if we do, there's a lower standard. Just lower the entire standard, right? Sounds like that's what these guys are doing. One standard, you make it or you don't. Let's see. Join your friends, join your friends. Two, two. Remember. One foot. Don't one, one, four. Don't Go, bro. I love you. One, one, four. Just power test. Away. Looks like you got a bunch of John Waynes in the Battle of Iwo Jima. The Kevlar's kicked back. <laughs> King, the going. group of students is aptly named The Wall. For over the years, it has literally stopped thousands of hopeful students dead in their tracks. At 1.8 meters high with a smooth surface in front and no holding place on top, it is quite daunting. Now that doesn't look hard, but if you don't have upper body strength, People often wonder why you do pull-ups, right? You're not doing a pull-up competition in the military. But if you can't pull yourself up over this thing, it looks like an easy obstacle to cross. Jump up, chicken wing it, throw your legs over. I'm not sure how much training they give. And that's why in the U.S. Marines, you know, and you guys and other branches, you do the O course, right? For these type of things in real life. Especially if you're a tad on the short side. The wall exercise is all about upper body strength. If this isn't your forte, you're not left with many options. Wearing full battle dress, the students have a 12 meter distance to run and build up momentum. Ample time if you know what you're doing. All these obstacles take some technique, but anybody who slows up at the wall, you're not going to make it. You got to jump one momentum and get to your armpit height in the thing. If you're short, jump higher. Nick, however, remains a matter of personal choice, and the styles vary no. greatly from student to student. Some seem unsure of their ability to succeed, but in the end, they do. Others only just make it on account of not giving in to muscle fatigue. Then you get those students who just knew that they would make it, and then those who probably knew they wouldn't. <laughs> a private pile there, right? He's not the Iron Marshmallow, so he's not going to make it. You know, those kind of guys, could they be effective in the military? Maybe. But unfortunately, you got to have a test. you got to have a standard. And if you don't make it, you go back, work in the chow hall or something else, right? Each student must climb to the roof of the hangar using a 5-centimeter thick, 50-meter long rope that is hanging about 30 centimeters above the floor. The students must use their hands, legs and feet to climb all the way to the top before sliding down the rope and since everybody gets just one chance, they need to get it right the first time. Distance is 170. Now that was nice to see. You get one chance. Now, my question is, what do you guys think? Put this in the comments. Do you think it's really one chance, right? Do they get two, maybe, if they're in a good mood? They're purple dinosaur. Do they get three? And I was glad to see the rope did not have any knots in it. That irks me to no end. Five meters. You've got 75 seconds. You will move along this road. They will be instructed at the turning point. You will turn around and you will come back. Wow, what's on his neck? There will be four pe See this thing on his neck? Ouch. At the time running, the line is marked on the road. As soon as you get the command fall in, you will fall in with your partner. Ready? You will stand like this. Pick up. Now pick him up. One, oh, two, three, four, five, go.
Like, take his number, number his other brain. Brain. Looks like that guy got yanked. They took his bracelet. Now, on those fireman carries, buddy carries, whatever you're going to call them, have you guys ever been tasked with the huge guy in the platoon? I have for some reason. The guy that's like 235 and muscled up, and that makes for a long day. You have to do 40 push-ups without breaking your rhythm. There's a small bar that you will place between your thumb and your pointing finger that will make everyone the same shoulder width apart to do the push-up. That's an interesting idea, you know, because some people have stronger triceps, so we'd like to do a wider, get more shoulders in and triceps that's pretty interesting i never seen it where they say you will do it the same width here's the bar figure it out his body is straight when he will do the push-up his elbows will be to the outside when he will go down when he will come up he will lock his elbow that is one push-up right go one that is one push-up you understand you do not break your rhythm you must touch the first of the instructor, then you will count. Same draw. Two warnings, third time, stand back. Do you understand? Now I want to see if they're going to enforce this rule for everybody. I doubt we're going to find out. But they're doing legit push-ups. Lock out the arm, 40 straight. Surprisingly, if you have to lock it out every time, there's a lot of guys that just can't do that. Whatever reason... Any questions? All right, stand up. During their next exercise, the students must complete 40 shuttle runs in a time frame of 95 seconds. To execute this exercise correctly, they need to run between two painted lines that are 6.15 meters apart. To complete one shuttle run, they must touch the ground with both hands on the outside of each line. Only on the 40th run may the student's body cross the line. It looks like an obnoxious drill. I don't know if there's a better way to do it. I kind of like it. I've never seen him almost do like training you'd see in, say, a basketball team, right? You know, to get quickness skills down. And they've got a time set. How they figured that time out, I have no idea. You guys, what do you think? Put that in the comments. How do you think they figured out the standard time on this? when they first started this back in the day. To perform the perfect sit-up, students must lay flat on their backs with their knees bent, their heels flat on the ground, and their hands locked behind their heads. A sit-up is completed when any elbow touches any knee and the shoulders touch the ground thereafter. Fellow students may hold the student's feet down, but are not allowed to give them any further assistance. This obstacle course, consisting of seven different obstacles, also serves as an eliminating exercise. And if a student is unable to cross any of these obstacles, he or she will be immediately withdrawn from the selection program. The My question is, and I have not seen this, do they get prepped for this? Because an O course can be a tricky thing if you've never done it before. Some of the obstacles just take some technique. I'll be curious to see if they can make it, and I haven't seen any prep for this. Maybe they had it in some kind of basic school prior to this selection. What do you guys think? Instructors will therefore be keeping a close eye on all the students throughout the exercise while they do individual evaluation. doesn't look, strike me as an overly challenging O course so far compared to what I'm used to. Well, let's keep watching.
During the night navigation exercise, students need to cross several obstacles spread along a distance of between 1 to 12 kilometers. As a if you want more of the South African Perry bots, put that in the comments. Thanks for watching.